Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brian from Kingdom Martin and Gods Nation. And for today's video, we will be going over whether or not you should pull for a lot of the medals and banners that have been coming out lately. Uh, now, for those of you that are unaware, I apologize uh, for not being able to have some videos out right away. Um, I had announced in my stream that I'm, I was going to have to take some uh, days off so that way I could study for my exams that I had yesterday, as well as I have another exam on Friday. So uh, I'm going to be spending today trying to pump out as much as I can for you guys. So without further ado, let's get right into it because we have a lot to cover. First of all, let's start off with the Toon Sword and Goofy Metal uh, just because of the fact that it is a VIP metal. And I get asked like a lot about this mostly simply because of the fact that like it's I, I can understand why it might be a little like confusing or iffy as to like how this metal is exactly supposed to be used and such. So let's start from the top. Uh, in case you don't know, this is what the metal does. It is a magic upright metal tier 8 costs 5 gauge a single target. For one turn, it raises your general strength by 7 tiers, your upright strength by 3 tiers, it inflicts more damage with one enemy left including raid boss parts and removes the target status effects, and its total max multiplier when fully guilted is from a 13.76 to a 24.16. Alright, now before I say anything else, I want to make sure I get this absolutely clear, okay? Because this is the main thing that I feel like people are accidentally jumping the ship on, uh, and it's it's not correct at all whatsoever. And that is simply being that Toon Sore and Goofy is not a damage metal, okay? By all means, please do not use this as a main damage metal at all whatsoever. Yes, I know that multiplier does say 24.16, and if you give it like the uh, plus 40 guilt bonus, for example, it will have a multiplier fairly close to that of like FFRK Warrior of Light and Terra. However, here's the thing that everyone since seems to be missing or disregarding, and that is the fact that this metal says that it removes the target status effects. That is the main thing right here that is getting people. Uh, in case you don't know what that means, that means that this metal will get rid of, completely erase all buffs and all debuffs that are on your opponent when you use this metal before it does damage. Which means that this metal is significantly worse than a uh, FFRK Terra or Warrior of Light. By all means whatsoever, you would not want this as a metal in the last slot of a Keyblade simply because of the fact it won't be able to take advantage of the debuffs that the rest of your main buffer and debuffer metals are going to inflict on your opponent. It's going to quite literally do probably only half, if not less than half, of the damage that maybe like a Warrior of Light or uh, FFRK Terra would actually provide. Simply because of the fact it can't take advantage of those debuffs. Um, so. Before I mention anything else, that's the w first thing I want to <laughs> make sure I get clearly cut across. So now that I finally took care of that, uh, let's go on to like how this metal is actually supposed to be used and whether or not you should get this, okay? So whether or not you should actually buy the VIP for this metal. Here are my thoughts about it. This is the type of metal that's honestly mainly meant for PvP, at least as of right now anyways. This is going to be like a, a PvP specific niche only metal. I'm expecting this metal though to be one of those type of like uh, metals that aren't effective now, but given maybe like two, three months from now will become a very useful and critical metal that you're going to like have to try and use as much as possible when it comes to PvP. And that is simply because of the fact that with the introduction of PvP, I am heavily expecting more and more metals that have two or plus more uh, turn effects to start popping up more often, which means that they will be able to carry over into your PvP setups as well. Uh, for PvP, which will mean that metals such as like Toon Sword and Goofy Metal that can provide buffs, that can erase your opponent's buffs and debuffs, as well as can do a pretty good chunk of damage for just being a, you know, damage metal as well. A metal like this can become very useful sometime in the future, if not right now. So in regards as to whether or not I think you should get this, I'm going to leave that kind of up to you, uh, simply because of the fact that it this this is a type of metal that's gonna vary according to the type of player they have it's not like a clear cut like oh yeah you gotta have this maybe for a veteran player this might be worth having just in case like to, just to have underneath your belt um in case like the situation pops in like oh yeah i need to use this metal but if you're just like an intermediate or beginner player uh you might you might really you might not really need to use this metal anytime soon so like i said i'll, I'll leave that one up to you guys okay but at the very least to give you guys an idea of the potential of how to 
use this metal properly. I'll even talk about this more in length in my metal analysis video, but this, let me give you guys an idea of how this metal is actually supposed to be used, or at least more efficiently supposed to be used, okay? Uh, so like I mentioned before, this metal is not meant to be used as a damage metal solely because of the fact it gets rid of all your opponent's debuffs, which is not what we want in terms of damage. So the most efficient and correct way to actually use this metal is to actually use it mostly as a buffer metal within like the first slot of your keyblade. Now because of the nature of this metal that it's trying to be both a damage metal and a dispel metal and a buffer metal at the exact same time, you're pretty much going to have to try and use this only in the first slot if possible. If you want to use this metal in the second slot, you're going to have to use a metal such as like the Toon Santa and Roxas metal here in the first slot that only provides just buffs. So that way when you use the Toon Sword and Goofy metal within the second slot, it doesn't get rid of any uh, unnecessary removal of the uh, debuffs that you inflict on the opponent. That's the only condition you would have to take into consideration if you want to use it in the second slot. Otherwise, just use it in the first slot. And the main thing that I think this metal is trying to go for in terms of correct usage is that it really wants to be paired up with the prime metals that are starting to pop up now. Um, so right here on the screen, I also have like a quick counterpoint setup that you could have at the beginning of your uh, keyblade to give an example of how this would work out. Um, as you can see, we have the Toon, Sora, and Goofy Metal here in the first slot. We have HD Vanitas, and we also have the new Prime uh, Key Art 17 Metal uh, in the third slot. And the way that this works is that because of the fact that your uh, Toon, Sora, and Goofy Metal over here provides the general strength, okay, provides plus seven general strength, so maxes that out. Your Prime Metal over here does not provide any general strength at all whatsoever like nada nothing at all okay it provides a ton of attribute buffs and debuffs as well as general defense down but provides no actual general strength at all whatsoever so being able to have the toon sword and goofy metal there in the first slot helps take care of that for you and then from there because of the fact that let's say for example using the uh, key art 17 again for for the counterpoint you can have a copy metal copying the uh key art 17 right here so that way you can still achieve your max magic uh, buffs so you still have your plus seven magic buffs you still have your plus seven general attack buffs uh, as well as you have the minus seven uh, magic buffs and you have the minus seven upright defense down debuffs as well as the minus seven general defense down debuffs as well and in case you're lacking in upright buffs for example toon sora and goofy over here already provides a plus three uh, upright buff and if you happen to have a key art 17 seven star metal for example uh, then that's even better you'll you'll easily have an additional six upright buffs from the copy metal and the key art itself and you'll get a max of plus seven upright buffs in case you happen to be in the situation where you only have the six star metal uh, for the key art prime metal and and same thing with these Toon Sword and Goofy. Because of the fact that Toon Sword and Goofy already provides a plus three upright buff already, you don't have to worry about that the Prime Metal isn't seven star yet. Know why? Because you can easily evolve your like tier four or other metals to still get the upright buffs for those metals anyways. You can include any random like tier four higher metal or random high score challenge metal, for example, uh, slap it right here on the fourth slot and fifth slot. And because of the fact they provide the upright buff for you because of the seven star update, you don't have to worry about uh, trying to max out your upright buffs nearly as much. And this is why I'm saying that this metal is mostly meant for PvP, because then the way that this would work then is that in a PvP-like setup, uh, you would have Toon Sword over here, get rid of the opponent's buffs or debuffs that, they've that they have on them, uh, for example. And then from there, you use your prime metals to set up the rest of the buffs and debuffs that you need uh, for you and your opponent. And then you can just go pure damage from that point afterwards. And that's the kind of situation that the that the Toon, Sora, and Goofy metal provides over here. And this is more of how you're actually supposed to try and use this metal if possible. And just a quick disclaimer too, you don't have to use this metal on just pure magic setups either. As long as the first slot is a magic upright slot, you can use it on pretty much any Keyblade that has a magic upright slot in the first slot. So even on Keyblades like the Starlight, for example, uh, once we start getting the speed upright prime metal in the future, whether or not it's a AOE or single target metal like Axel was, um, you can still use it on the Starlight because you can just put the, the Prime Metal right there in the second slot. If it ends up just being a speed version of the Key Art 17 Prime Metal, then you can use your uh, Riku replica over here or the uh, Pete Metal too and just copy it from the third slot and boom, you got the same result. 
As long as the first slot is a magic upright slot, you can take advantage of the Tomb Sword and Goofy Metal. So the next medal on the list is going to be the Prime Key Art 17 medal that we currently have going on for like the next day or two or something. Um, in case you don't recall what it does, it is a Magic Upright Metal Tier 4, costs 3 gauges, AoE, and for one turn it raises Magic Strength by 4, uh, lowers the target's Upright Defense, Magic Defense, and General Defense by 4 tiers, increases Special Attack or Guilt uh, by 40% for all medals within the setup, uh, afterwards and inflicts more damage with one enemy left including raid boss perks it has a total max multiplier of 11.56 to a 16.25 and this uh, by the way is just the six star version the seven star version obviously provides the plus three upright strength buff and the guilt bonus increases to 60 percent as well and of course the multiplier gets drastically increased now when it comes to the prime metals my advice for the prime metals is always going to be exactly the same for now and for the future prime metals coming up assuming that their banners are the same as they are now uh which is going to be that i rec i highly recommend i highly recommend only pulling once and then ignoring the banner from this point onwards okay now there's a few reasons why i'm stating this uh the first one being that you do not have to have and I want to make sure I make this clear because I keep seeing so many people say that you have to have seven star prime medals. And that is just not true at all whatsoever. You do not have to have a seven star prime medal. Okay. The main thing you have to worry about is just at, at the very least, attain your copy of the prime medal and move on from there. Not only will this save you jewels, but at the same time, you can also still take advantage of the metal even if it has no guilt, has no dots, and you can use it just for its ability because realistically it is mainly just a main uh, buffer debuffer metal. So you're not really using it for the damage, you're using it for its ability. And the second reason why you want to make sure you can at least guarantee the metal and then save your jewels for other stuff is because of the fact that the prime metals are low key replacing the stained glass metals. And this kind of ties in with whether or not you should pull for the stained glass metals too actually. As it is right now, I probably wouldn't recommend pulling for the stained glass metals anymore. It's simply because of the fact that the main reason why the stained glass metals were so good was primarily because of the fact that they provided a full upright and reverse buff in the game. However, because of the fact that these seven star medals are in the game now and they provide the plus three upright or reverse buff uh, if they're like tier four or higher or they're like exclusive medals such as like high score challenge medals and such. Because of the fact that just seven star medals alone already provide upright buffs, there's honestly almost no need for stained glass medals anymore in the long run. Sure, they'll be good for now, simply because of the fact that most people don't really have that many good uh, seven star medals just yet. But sooner or later, we're going to get to the point where we already have quite a decent number of 7-star medals underneath our belt, where the upright and reverse buff from stained glass medals isn't going to really matter as much anymore. Uh, in which case, you can still use just Kairi Shoni X and just use any other random uh, ordinary 7-star medal that you have with you, and boom, you still have all the necessary buffs and debuffs that you needed. Quite literally, the only reason why you would even want to go for stained glass medals in the first place right now is simply for PvP. Uh, the other reason why you want to make sure that you try and guarantee a copy of as many of the prime medals as possible is simply because of the fact that as of right now in almost all of the meta uh, universal setups within the game, the best setups all use like you mostly tier 8 medals that provide the upright or reverse debuffers okay so metals such as like sephiroth ex plus key art 16 ex plus uh kingdom arts 2 cloud ex plus uh, these type of metals for example uh the prime metals are quite literally slowly replacing those metals as you can see right here we got prime key art 17 which is an aoe uh metal that provides a minus four upright debuff this straight up replaces the illustrated kingdom arts 2 riku ex metal that we got like somewhat like like a while ago and it's actually even better than that metal too because in order to get the same stats as the key art 17 metal uh, your riku had to have extra attack to provide minus four debuff whereas Pri primark key art 17 provides it straight from one cast if you happen to have extra attack on your key art 17 boom you already have max upright debuffers right there already uh if you don't have extra attack you just use a copper metal and boom you have max debuffs right there already <laughs> it's it's just straight up better uh and to be honest who knows we could very easily get more 
uh, prime metals that are also AOE that are just uh, other attribute versions of key art 17. It's, it's one of those situations that the stained glass metals are realistically in the long run, just not really being as needed anymore. There's, they're low key being replaced by the prime metals. However, worst case scenario, I will say that just like with the stained glass metals in the past, I recommend trying to get at least one copy of an upright, uh, prime metal and one copy of a reverse prime metal if possible. All right, so the next and very last metal on the list is actually going to be the Zexion Plus metal. Uh, now, this this one, I know a lot of people are asking me whether or not it's actually worth pulling for this metal. And I will say, more or less, for the most part, yes, it is. It is totally worth pulling for this metal. Um, but there is a little bit of context that I want to provide for you guys uh, in case this happens to apply. So the main thing I want you to keep in mind as to whether or not you should probably go for the metal, and this will most likely apply to mostly just veterans, to be honest. Uh, if you're not a veteran player, chances are that you're not going to have uh, some of the things I'm about to mention, in which case I would almost say you're almost required or at least highly recommended to get the Zexion Plus right now if possible, because you're not going to get anything nearly as good as Zexion Plus in the future. And that is simply because of the fact that Zexion Plus is the best turtle metal in the game right now. For almost the past year, the most meta top used turtle metal in the entire game has been HPO for the longest time. Now, in case you happen to be around when HPO was out and you're a veteran like me, chances are you have this metal right here and you farmed it and made sure it had extra attack. So anytime I mention HPO, I just automatically assume you had extra attack on it. Primarily because of the fact that that was what you were, uh, that's what you had to make sure it had when you were farming the metal. If you happen to not know what this metal does, then chances are you're probably going to need Zexion Plus. But in terms of the most used and meta uh, turtle metal within the game, up to now anyways, uh, it was HPO primarily because of the fact, and we'll look over it in case you didn't know, is that HPO raises your general defense by one tier for two turns and raises your PSM defense by one tier for two turns as well and moderately recovers HP. The multiplier doesn't matter because it's a turtle metal. So basically this metal provides plus one general defense buff and plus one PSM defense buff. And because of the fact when farming this metal you guaranteed that it had extra attack, you were realistically getting plus two general defense buff and plus two PSM defense buff as well every turn and the effect lasts for two turns so ultimately because of the fact that the whole point of a turtle setup is to last as long as possible and to chip away your opponent's health until you eventually kill them uh, realistically you're getting a plus four general defense buff and plus four PSM defense buff from just HPO alone and for the longest time this has been the best turtle medal in the game now when Vexen Plus came out uh, we'll go over him as well. Vexen Plus, uh, for two turns, he raises your reverse strength and def general defense by one tier, and your speed and magic defense by three tiers, and he lowers the opponent's uh, general strength by two tiers as well, and he inflicts more damage to more turns that pass, and he recovers HP. Now, in terms of Vexen Plus, because of the fact that Vexen Plus only provides a plus one general defense uh, buff, and general defense is by far the most important trait when it comes to turtle metals compared to attribute defense um, it's also the same reason as to why general strength is more important than psm strength or upright and reverse strength too the only way that vexen plus would actually be as good as hpo if not better is only if your vexen plus happened to have extra attack uh, it was only at that point could you actually be like okay i have extra attack on my vexen i'm good now i can probably use vexen plus alone and I don't have to worry about using HPO as much. The keyword being as much. Chances are, even if you had Vexen Plus and you were a veteran player, you were probably still using Vexen Plus along with HPO just to make sure you still got your max defensive buffs within your two turns. Now in case you're wondering why exactly am I going over this, this is simply because that Zexion Plus is the best turtle metal in the game. Just a reminder, Zexion Plus says for two turns, he raises your PSM defense and general defense by two tiers, and he lowers the target's general strength by three tiers and inflicts and fixed amount of damage. The damage doesn't matter because it's a turtle metal, alright? The main thing that's important here is the fact that he provides, for two, t two turns, he provides your PSM defense and general defense by two. The two for general defense is the biggest factor for Zexion Plus. The fact that he also provides PSM defense, including power, which Vexion Plus lacks, is, is also a fantastic bonus. So realistically saying, alone on just one cast, 
over the course of two turns. Zexion Plus alone provides a plus four general defense buff as well as a plus four PSN defense buff, which if you remember, is exactly what an HPO provides when the HPO has extra attack. It's also almost what a Vexen Plus provides as well if the Vexen Plus has extra attack. The fact that Zexion Plus can do that alone on a single cast already makes him way better than Vexen Plus and HPO combined. Because <laughs> that means you can copy, you can literally copy Zexion just once and boom, you already have all of your max defensive buffs uh, within two turns. If you have extra attack, even better, you don't need to copy it at all and you already have all of your defensive buffs within two turns in a universal setup. In terms of PvP, you can copy this metal just twice. Uh, put a forwards and backwards copy metal with Zexion Plus and boom, you have most of your defensive buffs as well. Uh, so I'm not joking when I say Zexion Plus quite literally uh, replaces both Vexen Plus and HPO uh, combined. <laughs> he straight up replaces them. Um, so if you happen to be a new player or an intermediate player and you don't have HPO and you maybe have a Vexen Plus without extra attack, I highly, highly recommend, if not almost require you to like try and get Zexion Plus if you can, while you still can too. Because realistically, we're probably not going to get another really good busted turtle metal like Zexion Plus in a very long time, if not very possibly until next year. Um, that's the most likely scenario that's going to happen. One really cool thing about Zexion Plus as well is that because of the effect he's fixed damage, one really cool that I noticed while doing some testing uh, when fighting against the Zexion uh, organization event is the fact you can actually do a completely new uh, type of strategy with turtle setups now uh, and the turtle meta has even kind of evolved a little bit uh, in which case that now because of the fact that Zexion Plus actually does fix damage um, you actually don't need to use main buffer or debuffer metals anymore for turtle setups you can actually go pure fixed damage setup uh, for turtle set uh, turtle metals and because the whole point of a turtle setup is to just survive almost every single attack that your opponent provides and just chip away at their health very slowly until they eventually die um, you can just literally run a pure fixed damage setup with Zexion Plus and boom you automatically win every single stage assuming you can actually survive their attacks every single time and of course you won't have to use more than just your uh, pet skill second chance and a second chance on like one of your medals. And of course assuming as well that you also have some like defensive skills on your medals. Say maybe like a defense boost 3 max and maybe like a defense boost 4 or 5 on a medal. Okay you can straight up go turtle. Full blown turtle with fixed damage and you will almost guarantee kill your opponent assuming they can't one shot you every single time regardless of your setup. It's a pretty cool thing to think about. Uh, so just a quick recap in terms of whether or not you should pull for these medals. For Toon Sword and Goofy, it's going to depend on you and what type of medals you have. It's probably going to be much better uh, for the veterans just to have underneath their belt for now, just in case. For everyone else, it might not really be as useful. For our Key Art 17 Prime, I have re highly recommend pulling just once and moving on. And that's going to be my advice for every single Prime medal that pops up from this point onwards. And for Zexion Plus, I highly recommend, if not almost require you, to try and get Zexion Plus if possible. P simply because of the fact he is the best turtle medal in the game. Uh, if you don't have HPO and you don't have a extra attack Vexen Plus, then like you kind of have to get Zexion Plus simply because he's most likely not going to see a replacement anytime soon for maybe the next year or so. And last but not least, because of the fact I did mention it by extension, you don't really need to worry about getting any of the stained glass medals anymore right now either. Uh, you can if you want to. The most I would probably recommend though is that I probably wouldn't recommend getting more than just at least one upright and one reverse stained glass models simply to have those to help support any other uh setups you might need to go about but other than that that's it for today guys i hope you enjoyed the video please leave a like and subscribe if you find this content useful uh and make sure to hit that bell button if you wish to see more videos like this one but other than that my name is brian from kingdom martin cross nation and i will see you guys in the next video peace